how to put together the best plan, the best protocol on how to use a soft hyperbaric chamber. You have this beautiful chamber or maybe you go into a clinic to get your sessions there, but there are different ways of using it. So let's talk about the ways that are more effective. First, let's define soft hyperbaric chamber. It's a hyperbaric chamber, it's a vessel made of soft material in which we can recreate hyperbaric environment. Hyperbaric environment means increased pressure. Under that increased pressure, oxygen that we're breathing gets dissolved in plasma in our blood and that way more oxygen gets delivered to cells and tissues where it can participate in growth and repair. This oxygen is responsible for all the wonderful effects of hyperbaric therapy. Soft hyperbaric chambers can go up to 1.3 atmospheres of pressure. Now in some jurisdictions the same chambers are allowed to go to 1.4 and 1.5 atmospheres. This is by how much we can increase pressure. The more pressure the more oxygen gets dissolved in plasma. More oxygen gets delivered to our cells. So in a soft chamber, it's either 1.3, 1.4, 1.5. Let's look for a moment at the amount of oxygen that we're getting under pressure. Right now, I'm sitting here in my office, I'm at sea level, and I'm breathing air, which contains 21% oxygen, 78% nitrogen, and 1% of residual gases. When I'm inside a hyperbaric chamber and I'm still breathing air, the amount of oxygen that I'm getting increases by 30% at 1.3 atmospheres of pressure. So instead of 21% oxygen, I'm getting inside a hyperbaric chamber breathing just air, 27.3% oxygen. If I add oxygen concentrator, which is a special machine that's behind me that concentrates oxygen from the air and delivers it through the mask, I'm getting a lot more oxygen. Normally through the mask, we're getting about 60% with the use of oxygen concentrator, 60% of oxygen. Under 1.3 atmospheres of pressure, that's 78.3% oxygen. More oxygen, more repair. How do you put together the best plan, the best protocol on how to use a soft hyperbaric chamber? You have this beautiful chamber, or maybe you go into a clinic to get your sessions there, but there are different ways of using it. So let's talk about the ways that are more effective. First, let's talk about two things you can do before starting hyperbaric therapy. My advice is to consult with a hyperbaric practitioner if you've never had hyperbaric therapy before to see whether it's the best course of action for you, whether it's the best therapy in your situation, and whether or not you're approved for hyperbaric therapy. Second thing, which I find is very important, is to learn how to equalize pressure in your ears um, when you're under pressure. So if you ever flew on a plane or whether you're diving, you're familiar with the situation when your ears sort of feel blocked and you need to close your nose and blow in a closed nose to open the space in your ear so the air comes in and the pressure is equalized. This is super important. We need to do it every time we use a hyperbaric chamber. Please try before getting in to make sure you know how to do it and that you don't have any difficulties. So when you've done these two important things, now you're ready to use your soft hyperbaric chamber. And there are four variables, well, there are five variables actually, but four that we can consider before we start. First is what pressure are we going to use? So if a chamber goes to 1.3 atmospheres of pressure, we can choose any pressure below 1.3, including 1.3. If a person is relatively healthy, they don't have any indications that a lower pressure should be used. I always start with pressurizing to 1.3 atmospheres of pressure. This is our first variable. Our second variable is the concentration of oxygen that we're going to deliver. In room air, as I described at the beginning of this video, is 21% oxygen that we can increase to 27 0.3% of oxygen inside a hyperbaric chamber. Again, we can use an oxygen concentrator and increase that oxygen concentration even 
further. Decision whether or not to use an oxygen concentrator really depends on the goal of the therapy. If we are using hyperbaric therapy to increase um, angiogenesis, to increase the effects of the elevated uh, amount of oxygen, then definitely oxygen concentrator is a good idea. Our third variable is the duration of time that we're going to spend inside a hyperbaric chamber. How long our sessions are going to be. And there are different lengths of session that we can choose depending on which goal we're trying to reach. If, for example, we are planning to work out and we need to increase our energy, we need to get a burst of energy, or maybe we have an important event in about an hour and again we need uh, more energy to do that, I recommend doing shorter sessions, half an hour to 40 minute session to get that burst of energy. We can do longer sessions. Our standard session is usually 60 minutes or one hour. Um, it, this is the amount of time more or less that is needed for our nervous system to switch from sympathetic, which is fight or flight, to parasympathetic, which is rest and digest mode in which we heal. So this is our standard 60 minute session. If we're looking for deeper recovery, maybe we're really tired, maybe we had a really intense workout or intense day and we need to recover, or we're looking specifically for stem cell release, I recommend doing longer sessions, like 90 minutes or even 120 minute session. So this is our third variable. How much time are we going to spend inside a hyperbaric chamber? Our fourth variable, this is where people make their most mistakes is the frequency of hyperbaric sessions. How often are we going to use hyperbaric chamber? Is it once a week, twice a week? Maybe it's once a month, or maybe it's every day or even twice a day. The most effective way for now, as we know of now, is to do your hyperbaric sessions as frequently as possible and even doing them twice a day at the beginning, in the morning and in the evening might be a good idea. The effect of hyperbaric therapy is cumulative. That means that the effect of this subsequent session is built on the effects that we were able to reach in the previous session. And we shouldn't leave a lot of time between two sessions. So getting seven sessions a week, five sessions, six, five, four sessions a week is a really good frequency. When we go below three sessions a week, this is not enough of a frequency to get the most benefits out of hyperbaric sessions. And our fifth variable is how many sessions in total are we planning to do? And this question in most instances is not possible to answer at the beginning of your hyperbaric experience. You really need to do a certain number of sessions to look at the progress that you've made, to see how fast you're progressing, to determine how many sessions in total you would need. Normally, doing less than 10 sessions is not a good idea. Um, 20 sessions as a minimum number of sessions for a soft hyperbaric chamber seems to be like a good number. In many cases, we would need a lot more than 20 sessions. And remember, recovery after an intense workout is very different than traumatic brain injury or autoimmune condition. So depending on the health goals, depending on the current situation of a person, very different number of sessions might be needed. We're looking at 20 sessions or 100 sessions done at a certain period of time. This will be determined on the ongoing basis. This is how I do it for myself and for my clients. Every 20 sessions, I reassess the progress. So for example, our goal was to increase the energy to run marathon in three months. We start with a questionnaire and I ask a question, please rate your energy what it is at the moment on a scale of one to 10. And a person says it's six. Now we reassess after 20 sessions of hyperbaric therapy, again with the same question, please rate your energy. And if the energy, the daily energy level right now is at seven to eight, 
then the person is progressing nicely and we should continue with hyperbaric sessions. If the energy level has not increased or even dropped, then we need to go back, look at the whole picture and uh, find out what is happening. That's why I think that consulting with a hyperbaric practitioner is a good idea because somebody can look at the big picture and determine what would be the best course of action. And please remember that every person is different, every situation is different. Therefore, there is no sort of cookie cutter approach to hyperbaric therapy. We all should get different, slightly different or very different personalized treatment plans that would be the best for us to get to the goals that we're trying to get. Please share your experience of using a soft hyperbaric chamber or ask your questions in the comment section below. I really want to know how those hyperbaric sessions in a soft hyperbaric chamber went for you. And don't forget to give us likes and subscribe to our channel because this helps other people to see this content.